What's going on guys? Foosh. My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. It's time for another episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship. Today, Academic Chris over on the Patreon requests we let Hestia sit for a little while and take a look at one of the deities from the Ravenloft campaign setting in D&D. Today, it's all about Ezra. And Achilles is all about that. If you're liking what you're seeing, remember to like, subscribe, and ding that bell. Of course, this deity will get some stuff in Pathfinder 1st and 2nd edition. I know, Achilles. Isn't that so cool? Isn't it so great that today, this episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship was brought to you in part by Josh King. What do you think, buddy? Yeah? Pretty cool? Well, now he does. He never wants to talk when spoken to, but he wants to talk whenever he wants. Cats are weird. Thank you, Josh. Now, here we go. So, in the Ravenloft campaign setting, Ezra is one of the few, actually, I think maybe the only good-aligned deity. She's usually depicted as a lovely, dark-haired woman, bearing a silver longsword and alabaster kite shield, adorned with a sprig of belladonna. She's often referred to as Our Lady in Mists, Our Guardian in the Mists. Honestly, she kind of feels like Avacyn from Magic the Gathering to me. Her church was formed, oh, just under a hundred years ago by Yakov de Silnia, who claimed that this divine entity came to him and gave him a message to spread her teachings throughout the world. According to most traditions, Ezra was a virtuous mortal woman who, despairing the evils of the world in which she lives, yeah, you don't say, surrendered her mortality to become an eternal guardian of mankind. However, the sects of the Church of Ezra, of which there are many, have been debating the true nature of the religion for generations. Ezra's priests are known as anchorites and were a class in old school D&D. They're protectors, healers, and upholders of the law. They're seen as personal emissaries of the goddess and she gives them power over the mists as well as power to heal and protect. Because you need that to fight the hordes of the legions of the night that exist in Ravenloft. Some of these choose to wander the world, others lead congregations in worship, others devote their lives to the study of religious writing in an attempt to divine what is known as the grand scheme. Everything is happening for a reason and the true. Despite all the evils in the world, salvation will come. It's all part of Ezra's plan. Easy enough, right? There are four main sects in the Church of Ezra. The original sect, known as the Home Faith, appoints anchorites to the task of protecting and healing. Some sects teach that anchorites must convert as many as possible. Some sects preach that a time is coming where all will be consumed by unparalleled darkness. And there have been several other minor sects over the ages, so many that the Rite of Revelation was created to weed out those who truly have been visited by the goddess and bring the world a new version of the faith. Now let's get to that homebrew, shall we? If you think you could do it better, it goes in the comments. Ezra is a deity that is all about protecting, all about fighting the undead, but she does have some lawful evil followers in older editions that are more concerned with just burning out the heretics, whether or not heretics they actually are. So I'm gonna call her Lawful Neutral. Her domains are Healing, Law, Protection, and Glory, with the subdomains Legend, Purity, Judgment, and Defense. Her favorite weapon is the Longsword, and her symbol, a silver longsword and sprig of belladonna, superimposed on an alabaster kite shield. To perform Ezra's obedience, wake with the rising sun, and pray to Ezra that she protect the weak and innocent from the horrors of the world. As part of your prayers, if you are in an area where it would be reasonable to find those in need of protection or healing, go to them and give them whatever help they may need. Though if you have more immediate objectives that would prevent a greater evil, you may prioritize those. In return, you gain the ability to see through mist, fog, and similar concealment. Exalted boons give you obscuring mist thrice a day, fog cloud twice a day, or diamond spray once a day. At 16th level, any evil creature who ends their turn inside a spell or effect generated by you that grants concealment, such as fog cloud, but not a spell that would cause someone to not see due to light levels, such as darkness, takes 1d6 points of damage for every two caster levels you possess. With a fortitude DC 10 plus half hit dice plus the highest mental stat modifier you possess for half. If the creature is an undead or evil shape changer, they instead take 2d6 plus 1 points of damage for every two caster levels. And at 20th level, when you cast a spell with the light descriptor, it burns the eyes of the unholy. 
Creatures of evil alignment cannot detect foes by any means in areas of normal or brighter light that you create magically. Sentinel boons grant us shield of faith thrice a day, shield other twice a day, or life shield once a day. At 16th level, any spell you cast that would grant an armor or shield bonus grants an additional plus one bonus for every four caster levels against evil creatures. Against undead or evil shape changers, it also grants a 5% chance to negate critical hits and sneak attacks for every caster level you possess. And at 20th level, once per day, if an ally within 30 feet of you would be brought to 0 hit points or less by an evil creature, they are affected by a caster level 20 heal spell. The Evangelist Boons give you Cure Light Wounds thrice a day, Cure Moderate Wounds twice a day, Cure Serious Wounds once a day. At 16th level, any spell you cast that would heal hit point damage via positive energy heals an additional 1 per die rolled. And at 20th level, you may cast spells that heal hit point damage via positive energy as swift actions. They deal damage to evil shape changers as if they were undead. Lawful neutral, of course, friends, means lawful good, so off we go. Paladin Code. I am a shield against evil. Though I am without allies in a land of darkness, my resolve shall never waver. I will strive to help all those that I can, but those who are bathed in the light of Ezra will be my priority. One must walk in the light to know its true glory. There are many paths to walk in Ezra's grace, but there is only one true path, and it is the path I follow. All things are merely a part of the grand scheme, and I will not mourn loss or setback longer than necessary. For that deific boon, let's do a permanent plus two to wisdom, shall we? Seems good. In second edition, Ezra remains lawful neutral. Her edicts oppose evil undead and monsters, provide healing, Spread the teachings of the church. Anathema to her, become undead for personal gain, show cowardice in the face of evil, disrupt the cohesion of a community. Her follower alignments are lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil, and neutral. As for the devotee benefits, her divine font is to heal, her divine skill is society, her favorite weapon, the longsword, and in lieu of new cleric spells, Let's try something a little more homebrewy instead. Let's say heal spells deal damage to wear creatures as though they were undead. Now, depending on how far back in D&D's history you go, Ezra's faith is either non-existent or at best incredibly divisive. There are some accountings that say that Ezra never actually existed and was just invented by mortals seeking to find solace and strength in a land of darkness and earn their place in the upper class. But in a campaign setting like Ravenloft, yeah, it totally makes sense to me that there would be at least one deity out there who would like to oppose the armies of vampires and zombies, oh my. Playing or worshipping a follower of this goddess says one thing to me, and that's Avacyn and Innistrad. I'm assuming the people who wrote the Ravenloft campaign setting might have maybe had a hand in the Innistrad block in Magic the Gathering, at least as far as the lore goes. They seem very, very similar. And Avacyn certainly plays a similar role in Innistrad, a world consumed by darkness and stuff. Depending on where you sit in a timeline in Ravenloft, this could mean your player or your campaign is a small group of people against impossible odds, or it could be a running the evil creatures out back to the darkest corners of the land once again. Either way, that presents its own challenges. Everything from intrigue to mass combat to eating too much Italian food to keep yourself safe. In any case, what do you guys think about Ezra? Have we played in the Ravenloft campaign setting? Have we converted it to Pathfinder? Let me know how that went for you in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Will it be Hestia next week? Will we get patron sniped once again? We're getting pretty close to episode 100 of Wednesday Afternoon Worship. Probably going to call that one for myself. But until then, friends, see you next week.